you said that you know Cho and Frick, they don't they don't really have any reasons to argue. Um, mm -hmm. Henry and Louisa, what I read, they had this sort of um, telepathic way of communication that they would understand each other without words. I think you can see some of that in Little Woman in Joe's and Frederick's, the way they communicate. And um, like you said, well, they are probably them. They probably have the least problems in communication when it comes to the different couples in Little Woman because they know each other so well. So it's really interesting that, that Louis and Henry would have this sort of telepathic rapport between one another. And, you know, even though Louis had temper tantrums, Henry was, what I read, quite a peaceful person and didn't really care too much about arguing. I mean, I think it brings another extra layer to Little Woman and to Chosen Frederick's relationship. I think you can see a lot of that in Little Man, especially when they have this sort of teasing <laughs> conversation between one another. Well, they really don't argue a lot in the in the sequels. And if they don't argue in, in, in Little Woman, why would they argue? They really don't. <laughs> they don't have any big conflicts. John and Laurie are the ones who have the conflicts. And even with Meg and John, well, I think there was a reason for that argument. And after that, they were a better couple. You know, Meg realized right. that she had problems with leaving behind this idea that she did wish that sometimes they would have more money. And John realized that, well, Meg has more needs. It's a growing thing, you know. It, it's not easy. I mean, I, I've not yet had to have been in a relationship, but, but hearing, talking between them, my friend and, my, and seeing my sister go through certain some of her relationships it's a growing thing you know it's, you gotta learn each other's idiosyncrasies and you gotta learn like what does it mean to have another person in your life that is so close to you you know it's, it's just like when people say like when they have kids they have that realization of like oh I just have realized that it's not going to just always be about me sometimes it's about them and that, and that doesn't mean that you necessarily are sacrificing the overall picture of what you want for them, but just kind of taking a step back and going, like, I got to realize that even though I approach this situation this way, it doesn't work when I go go it with this person of whom I am living with and love and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I think that with Meg and John, it was because they were already so shy with each other in the beginning of their relationship that it took a little bit more time for them to sort of understand what does it really mean to be in love and to be married. They are such an underrated uh, little women couple. It's it's such a sweet little romance that it's like, oh, they, they love each other and like, you know, watching them kind of blossom into these developed parents who truly uh, care for their children and surprisingly John being a lot more hands-on than you'd expect any man from that time period to be hands-on with their kids but yeah it, it really goes to show that you know marriage is not always as easy as one would think in a little woman when there was the cat catfishing sequence i think there was a moment when uh, afterwards uh, meg was like looking hello and welcome to the little woman podcast before entering the podcast i wanted to let you all know that a little woman podcast now has merchandise available at society6.com slash little woman podcast there you will find stickers posters mugs and t-shirts to fulfill all your little woman needs come and check it out link is also in the description and now to the podcast that Lori wasn't going to do any kind of jokes with, with John. She was uh, keeping an eye on him more closely that she didn't want and nothing bad to happen to John. I think I would do the same if that happened to me. John is really underrated character. Like I always love that scene when they're in the Camp Lawrence and he's defending Meg being a, a teacher. A governess. A, a governess. And he's like, oh, these American girls, they need to earn a living too. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's a, such a not. sweet scene. I don't really think that moment in particular is really seen in any version. I mean, we do have certain versions that do have, like, the, the beach slash boating scene mm -hmm. and uh, those, like, first hints of, like, you know, oh, I don't have any 
family to worry about Meg being like, oh no, well I will, I would miss you if something were to happen. Like, it's 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 precious, and you know the fact that he is so patient with her because like he knows that he loves her, but you know he he knows that maybe Meg isn't fully sure, but he's not pressuring her in the same way that the way Lori would have. He just is like, it's all right, you know, I I'll wait if you'd like, and I'm I'm always here if you do realize that you do love me that but that's okay you take your time you you got you do what you got to do <laughs> like uh, he is he is so such a sweet character and 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 the fact that he just wants Amy uh, he wants Meg to be happy even at the sacrifice of getting a new coat for her to get a dress is just so sweet and and it's such a big moment for Meg to kind of be like you know what I don't need a dress I just need you and it's it's a, such a lovely little relationship that really doesn't get as much love as the other two comparatively and, and I think that's a shame. Both Friedrich and John they feel parallel in that sense that they both feel at some point that they are not word of this woman With, uh, mm-hmm. with John is that Meg has all the pressure to marry a rich guy because she is the prettiest of the sisters. And especially Aunt March wants her to marry some rich man. And then there is that rumor going on that Meg has something going on with Laurie and Marm is really mad about it, and uh, which is understandable. But I think John also felt that um, he was too poor for her because, you know, Meg came from a poor family too. He didn't feel that he could give what she needed. That's also one of the reasons why they waited, why he waited for her. I love that scene in in Little Woman when Friedrich feels that he's not worthy of Joe, but it's also because he thinks that Joe is engaged to Laurie, and he can only base his views on Laurie to what Joe has told him, which is not a lot, and only that he's this rich neighbor and Joe's mm-hmm. best friend. And that's pretty alarming. When you are in love with this girl, I think, and you hear that, okay, are they engaged? And he doesn't know that. And then he's so happy when he comes to Concord a year later, and then he finds out that Amy and Laurie are married. Joe is uh, available. Like, I always kind of, uh, again, props to the 1970 version, as flawed as it is, they do handle that scene exactly as I kind of imagined it in the book, where, like, he's like, Oh yes, you're you're the friend. Hi, nice to meet you. And Lori's like, Oh yeah, and this is my wife. And he's like, Oh, you're married. Okay, well we can be friends. <laughs> like now there's nothing holding me back from you know, but but the fact that he was willing to gracefully kind of step aside for Joe, uh, if that was the case, is very endearing to like. It's only until after he realizes that Lori is married to Amy and is not at all uh, with Joe that he's like, Oh. Okay, now I can finally say my feelings, uh, which is very true with every version. Like it, when he finds out that there is no Joe and Lori, it's like, okay, now I can finally say what I feel. O- otherwise, before I was just willing to internalize it and just make me feel sad <laughs> forever. <laughs> or so, yeah, poor Friedrich. He was willing to do that for Joe if that was what she had wanted, but it had worked. Ended up working well for everyone. <laughs> Such a nice scene where he's like, oh, and then the narrator mentions how Larry thought he was the nicest German he ever met. He was so friendly. Right. It's a really funny scene. I, I, I really love the whole courting episode in the novel. He always wants what's best for Joe. It, again, it sort of makes me go like, oh, you two idiots, you love each other. Like, like. How, you know, they always seem to be just happening to meet up at the same spot. Like, oh, I didn't see you there. Uh, maybe I'll go with you to see your sister. And maybe maybe I'll come home for a spot of coffee. I mean, not that I was waiting to see you. Joe being all like, Friedrich, oh, I mean the professor is coffee this way. <laughs> like, like, it's very clear to everyone except to each other. It would seem that you are madly in love but like it i guess love makes you share one brain cell <laughs> in this case but then it leads to probably one of the most romantic scenes ever with them just taking shelter with each other under an umbrella and saying how much they just love each other 
just all comes out in this moment of, I believe you're going away, and that makes me sad. It's like, no, I'm not going away. I just, I, I promise I won't leave you. I love you too much. Like, it's just, oh, I love it. I love that scene so much. It's a really romantic proposal. I have nothing to give you but a full heart and empty hands and the whole her taking his hand and saying, not empty now. It's like, this is true classic romantic is on you know when people talk about like pride and prejudice mr darcy holding lizzie's hand and and people want to say joe and friedrich are not romantic how dare you you must not have read or watched that scene properly it's like when people say that joe and friedrich are not passionate enough then in the umbrella chapter he's holding his voice crying and then he asks her why are you crying and then she's like because you're going away. And then we find out that he has been keeping Joe's poem with him for months and months. And they pretty much start to make out right after the proposal. Right. And the fact that Joe, like, is the one who pretty much jumps on Friedrich. Like, the, the fact that, despite the fact they're in the middle of a muddy road, is like, I just got to kiss you because I can't hold it in. And just them making out while... People are passing them, and it's raining. Their clothes are all muddy. Like, who cares? They got a kiss here and now. Who who cares who sees and whatnot? And particularly for back then, that was so scandalous. Yeah, in the 19th century, it wasn't really seen as appropriate to have such public expression of affection. I read in a, another Louisa May Alcott novel in the work story of experience because there's the moment when David who is uh, once again based on Henry David Thoreau when he confesses his feelings for Christine who is the protagonist he almost has the similar blurt that Friedrich has in the umbrella chapter that he's been holding all these feelings inside and then he just lets it all out there when he confesses his love for her and uh, I think you know it's Something that Louisa kind of recycles in her stories, I think there's something similar in Rose in Bloom. When Mac confesses his feelings to Rose, you know, when I read about him, he was he's quite similar to Freddie in that sense that he would take his time to think things through before he would express his opinion or something that he really wanted to say. There's a lot of descriptions about him that he was sort of a more of a deep thinker and then uh, also in some ways, very passionate person. Yeah, I think some of that must have come from Louise's own experiences. Why else would she write about it in her novels? We have been talking about two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, I my goodness. Yeah. Well, thank you, Christina, for joining me. This was lots of fun. Yes, and thank you for inviting me. This, uh, I've never been a part of a podcast before, so this is very exciting for me. <laughs> And I hope that the listeners get a chance to, you know, enjoy it as much as I did. You can find you at Tumbrel from the Joe and Friedrich blog. It's a great blog. People go and read it. Thanks. I try my best. <laughs> that was our chat for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening. Take care and make good choices. Bye.